welcome to today's presentation. It's about finding the perfect tenant. And this is going to tell you how self-managing landlords can find the perfect tenant and avoid choosing the wrong tenant. As with most things, there's a process to follow, do things in a certain way, and we're gonna go through all of that in the next few moments. So in this uh, next few minutes, we're going to talk about the four steps to finding your perfect tenant, look at the um, steps needed to make sure your marketing is excellent, that you have an effective inquiry management system, that you're conducting the perfect viewing, and that your referencing system really gets to the bottom of finding out all about your tenant. So I'm gonna guide you through all of these steps, and at the end of this presentation, I'm gonna explain how to achieve all of these things. So perhaps you have chosen the wrong tenant in the past, maybe a bit difficult, didn't go on with them, maybe some more serious issues. Perhaps you're worried about choosing the wrong tenant and you wanna get it right first time. Perhaps um, you want to know how to minimize the risk of choosing the wrong tenant and you want a long-term tenant that wants to stay and look after your property. So we can help you with those things. Very briefly, I've been an accountant for the last 20 years in my corporate career. Um, I've a landlord since 2005. I've been refurbishing and investing in properties and we established Jones & Co in 2014. So I've been letting agents speaker since 2016 in a local networking group and a property meeting host since 2019. Thoroughly enjoy that. And last year we started a a property podcast. About Jones and Collettings, established in 2014, we have hundreds of properties under management, Norfolk wide, and our products include sales, lettings, property acquisition services, refurbishment services, and coaching. And we also have a wider network of property professionals that we are connected to. So, back to today, how self-managing landlords can find the perfect tenant and avoid choosing the wrong tenant. So firstly, step one, excellent marketing. What your marketing of your property is really looking to do is get the click, that's pretty much it. Get someone to take an interest, click and inquire about your property. Then your marketing has done its job. So to achieve that, um, obviously photos are key. If you can dress your property, if you have furniture in it, I would highly recommend dressing your property. It's quite easy to beat the average photo sometimes online, so make sure you take the effort to dress your property. Make sure it's bright, but I would consider a professional photographer at this point. You've kind of got one moment to, to dress and present your property and investing time and effort into that activity is highly recommended. So do take the effort to get some fantastic photos. Descriptions, again, key, probably less important than the photo, but make sure it's engaging. Make sure you tell your reader who you're trying to attract and get that click from all the reasons they might want to click. So perhaps make it very easy to read, we use bullet points a lot because people don't have much attention, just time to spend looking at adverts, so make sure it's bullet pointed and punchy. But have a call to action at the end. We find it useful to tell people what to do next. So click to book a call, call me, tell them to do something after um, in that description. So have a call to action. Um, and portals, use, obviously use the portals. There's obviously lots of them around, right moves Zooplers on the market. Um, less known ones perhaps back in the day, maybe Gumtree, not so much anymore. And if you're renting by the room, we recommend using Spare Room um, for that activity. So your marketing's excellent, you've got a click and you've now got an inquiry. So again, a few things to think about here. Um, the speed to lead is really, really important. The person looking at the advert for your property has clicked and they'll probably click on a few more. So you are now in competition with other properties and other landlords in the marketplace. So if you get to them quicker, you're gonna engage them and have a better response, arguably. So contact them in the way that they contacted you, email, text, phone, um, but do get back to them as quick as you can because they will book other viewings and they will take other properties if it's not yours. You can, so now you've got hold of them, you can pre-qualify on the phone. So you don't wanna waste time going to viewings when you know that property isn't right or that person isn't right for you. So do some pre-qualification questions on the phone and have a start building a rapport and the relationship kind of starts now because you've got back to them quickly, now you can speak to them, find out a bit more about what they're after. 
So find the basics, moving date. If they want to move three months ahead and your property is available now, it's probably not going to work for you, but can they be flexible? Um, how long do you want to stay? If it's three months and you want a two-year contract, it's not going to work. Um, can they afford it? So do ask some questions about, you know, what's your job, where are you employed, etc. You can ask those questions. You need to know eventually the answer. So you might as well start finding that stuff out sooner rather than later. So open questions, really important. Um, and we'll go into that in a minute in the viewing in the viewing section. So I think be flexible is another sort of point to, to raise here. Um, they're going to be your customer. They're going to pay your money um, in the form of the rent. So I think it's important to be as flexible as you can be with viewings because they will be seeing other things. So if you can accommodate the viewing the day after, um, you know, if you have a sitting tenant, then obviously do let them know 24 hours in advance. But if you can accommodate their evenings and weekends, perhaps around the schedule, that's going to just stand you instead of getting your, that person into your house before, before others. So yeah, they will be looking elsewhere, so be flexible. Um, conducting a perfect viewing, this is, you've now done quite a lot of effort, you've done some great marketing and you've done some pre-call. They are right for your property, it seems, and it might work for you, you both. So I think this is all about building rapport. Um, this bit and it's almost like a mini interview both you to them and them to you So this is about asking open questions. So obviously show the house as best it can possibly be Make sure it's clean tidy and all well presented. That's kind of the basics um, But then kind of build rapport. So the two questions that we like to ask What's the reason for your move? That's going to give you a really good sense of their urgency What they're, what they're looking, moving towards or what they're moving away from and that will give you a sense of where they're about in their life and their stage etc um, and what they're looking for. So they will tell you a bit about their location, a bit about their price, a bit about their quality. They're going to come up with some things and they can start talking to you more openly. So I think those two questions are the really good questions to ask. What are the reason for your move and what are you looking for? So you've built some rapport, you've shown them around the house, you've pointed out all the things that they might want to uh, be interested in. I think it's important at this stage not to kind of say thank you, goodbye. I think ask for business. Say, would you like to take the property? Ask a closed question. They can only say yes or no to that, um, and then you know. If it's a yes, great, move forward. If it's a no, that's fine, find out why. What is it you need to know? What else haven't I told you, or how can I help address that concern? You might not be able to, ultimately. It might not be for them. That's okay, but quite often, you'll find that their concerns can be addressed. Um, so do ask for the business, then you will get an objection. You will get a yes or an objection and then answer that objection as best you can. And then number four, your referencing system. There are other videos on this, but this is the basics of a referencing system. So let's assume you've now done the viewing, you've created a rapport, they like the property, they like you and you like them. This all sounds quite good at the moment and you might be able to move forward and do some business with them. But you need to get some facts in front of you. This has just been so far the interaction of what they've told you. Um, and it's now common practice to get proof of all that stuff. So have an application form that's comprehensive. Um, so ask all the relevant questions that you need to know to reference your tenant fully. Um, things like obviously their name, their date of birth, their next of kin, and a move-in date, etc. So we've got examples of the forms that you can use, but have a comprehensive application form so you get all the details that you need to reference them. You can obviously do the referencing yourself, or you can outsource it to a third party referencing company for quite a modest price, and I would recommend doing that because they would tell you in their view, in their experience, this is a tenant you want to take forward or not. So the referencing falls into three categories really. Affordability, can they afford it? So evidence would be things like bank statements or um, pay slips. Um, those things will tell you, is there a regular flow of income coming into that person's bank account every month, every week, etc. that they can afford it. The industry standard is take the rent amount, times it by 30, and that would be the annual income that person is expected or you would like to have to pass the affordability uh, criteria in the referencing process. So that's 30 times is a quite a common, quite a common industry standard for referencing criteria when it comes to affordability. Credit search, um, they're likely to have a credit file in the UK. If they've had a mobile phone or a loan or a credit card, those things, that data is stored on their credit file and you can access that credit file. And it will tell you, have they got any CCJs, have they been bankrupt? 
and other information like that. It won't tell you their payment profile of debts, etc., but it will tell you a bit about them that you can then move forward and say, this is okay. Having a CCJ isn't necessarily a showstopper. Some people do get into, into financial problems, but if they are honest about it and they work through it, maybe you can work with them. The previous landlord reference is also quite important. So you might have come across this um, information once you've asked them why are you moving and they might have told you a bit about the landlord or about, about the situation but a previous landlord reference is highly recommended and you might actually want two references one from the previous landlord or the current landlord and one from the landlord before um, the reason for that is the most recent landlord might just tell you they're a good tenant um, when perhaps they might not be the best tenant but their motivation is to move them on so consider getting more than one landlord reference but they will tell you if they were a good tenant, they would rent again, or a bad tenant, they wouldn't rent again. If any of these things are not as you'd like them, perhaps you can consider using a guarantor to strengthen the application. Now, a guarantor signs to say that they will uphold some of the conditions of the tenancy agreement if the tenant doesn't. And the most obvious one is they commit to paying the rent on behalf of the tenant if the tenant doesn't pay or can't pay. Um, a whole section on different presentation on guarantors and a different video, but a guarantor might give you more comfort to move ahead with this tenant. So you've now got on with the tenant, they like the property, you like them, they pass your referencing and now you can move forward to contract stage. So I hope that's given you a bit of a sense of how to find your perfect tenant. So we've talked about the marketing, we've talked about the excellent effective inquiry management, We've talked about how to conduct the perfect viewing and a bit about the referencing system that you might want to use. So now I'm just going to explain how you can achieve all of these things. So if you've enjoyed today's presentation and you would like me and my team to help you do this for you, then book a call with me or a member of the team. So there's links below this video to book a call with me and my team to see if we can help you do these things. We have spaces to take a few phone call appointments, but the spaces do fill up, and when they're gone, we won't have any more for a few more weeks. So please do click the link below and book a call. And on that phone call, we will listen to all your issues. I know landlords have a lot to deal with, so it might be about fine tenants, it might be about something else, but it's likely we've come across those issues in the past ourselves. So we will listen to your issues, and understand what you want to achieve, moving forward and it will give you our best advice and if at the end of that phone call it feels like we're a good fit for you and you can be a good fit for us and we'll see if we can work with you so do go ahead and book a call so until next time if i could ask you if you have got value out of this video please like and subscribe and comment to the video and click on the links below to get access to all of our other free content that might help you in your landlord and property business. So until next time, here's the success of your property business. Take care.